What's up? My name is Technumber here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be taking you through optimizing a Plague Tale Requiem, a brand new release on Steam that's got a really good story, from at least as far as I've seen, but it is pretty graphically demanding, especially for older hardware. This video is going to tackle how to get better FPS out of the game without losing too much of that good experience. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. First of all, if you haven't already, close all of the background programs running that you can, turn off all of the unnecessary overlays like Discord and things like that. And if you haven't already, it's probably a good idea to optimize your Windows and your NVIDIA graphics card drivers if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. In the description down below, you'll find Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. Without further ado, let's get to optimizing a Plague Tale Requiem. I'll start by firing up the game itself through Steam in my case, but the steps are the same for pretty much any platform. Unfortunately, you will need to prepare yourself for a flashbang. The settings menu is very, very bright. You have been warned. I'll head into settings from the main menu and inside of here, squinting your eyes, head across to the graphics tab at the very top. Starting at the very top, brightness is user preference, so heading across to the first option, VSync. You should definitely turn this off for better input latency and only turn it back on if the top half and the bottom half of your screen aren't syncing, resulting in screen tearing. Screen resolution should match your display's resolution, that way things won't be blurry and you won't be rendering more pixels than you can actually show on your screen. The same goes for resolution scale, set this to 100%, and assuming you've set both of these correctly, your game will be really sharp and easy to see in-game. Anything lower in either of these options here usually results in a rather blurry display, making it difficult to see what's going on. Scrolling down, we have display mode. This should definitely be set to full screen for more FPS and NVIDIA DLSS super resolution. Unfortunately, I don't think that there's AMD FSR available in this game, so this is an NVIDIA specific setting. If you have this available, it's a good idea to push it across to quality and leave it there for a huge boost in FPS with practically no visual impact. You'll see the further to the right you push this, the more FPS you'll get. However, the further you do push it, you may notice things get a little bit blurry, and of course you'll notice some really bad artifacting, especially when you're looking around really quickly. This is definitely something you don't want to push too far, as it can be really distracting. However, if you're on lower end hardware, after optimizing everything, you may have no choice other than to push this to the right, giving you a huge boost in FPS. Quality is a good place to put it. Simply put it there and leave it. Reflex low latency, you most definitely won't be needing this on at all. However, if you do see an improvement from having reflex turned on, you can set this to enabled. Otherwise, if you're on a PC that's CPU bottlenecked rather than GPU bottlenecked, you can push this across to enabled plus boost. For me, I'll be leaving it off. It's not a Twitch shooter or anything like that. So you really don't need your low latency turned on unless you see a specific boost from this. Then motion blow. You'd only really want to turn this off if you prefer the experience without it. If you're someone who suffers from, say, motion sickness, it's definitely something you'll want to turn off to make the game a lot more bearable. Same goes for chromatic aberration. It's also user preference. You'd really want to turn this off if you're someone who gets motion sick. Scrolling down further, graphics preset. This is where we'll get a lot of our FPS, and from here on out, it's just customizing what this option up here allows us to change in bulk you'll see that between high, ultra, and low, there's usually a huge FPS difference, and that's no different here. If you're on a lower end PC, crank this down. On a higher end PC, set this to high, and we'll start customizing the options below it. As soon as you do change an option, you'll see it changes to custom, so don't worry about that too much. Setting this based on what your PC is currently, between low and high, we can start by customizing the rest of the options here. Draw distance, I'd recommend setting to medium for a huge boost in FPS, especially if you have the rest of the options turned up. Shadow maps is just quality of shadows. Because it's a scenic game with lots of things to look at, you would usually want this set to medium at the absolute lowest, unless you really need FPS, as you'll not necessarily be focusing on shadows, but they're definitely something you'll notice a lot more, especially while you're sneaking around. Volumetric lights, won't add too much to the game. You can have this set down to low for a good FPS boost. However, if you do like the volumetric lighting effects, you can push it up to medium. I'll be leaving it on low. Ambient occlusion. This usually has a huge impact on how the game looks. You can set this down to low for an FPS boost, but I'd recommend setting this to medium at the absolute lowest. 
it adds a huge amount of detail to grass and other objects on the floor, which makes it an absolute necessity for a game like this, where you're going to be walking around a lot of the time, taking in your environment. Depth of field, once more, user preference. However, I personally like to see what's happening in the distance without needing to worry about putting on glasses. Set it down to low and forget about it if you like seeing things. Scrolling down, we have contact shadows. Usually you'll leave this on low at the lowest, but you can turn it off here for even more FPS, but the impact will be very small, if anything at all. Light shafts, also pretty much user preference. You can turn this down to low without losing too much of the actual game itself. However, this will have a very minimal effect on FPS in game. On the lower end of the spectrum here between low medium and high if you push it up to ultra you'll notice a few fps go away you probably leave this on medium or low i'll set this on medium there screen space reflections unlike rtx reflections this is a technology that's been done for many many years and usually has a very small impact on fps you can leave this on medium and forget about it but if you need extra performance crank it down to low or even none though having the set to none you may lose a bit of the actual game experience so low is probably the lowest you'll want to go but of course you can crank it up higher if you so wish i'll be leaving it on medium and forgetting about it then texture quality, this is completely VRAM dependent. If you have a 3080 or a 2080 or maybe even 2070, set this to high and forget about it. A very high end card like an 80 Ti or 90, crank it up to ultra. Otherwise you have medium and low options as well. You'll notice a very small impact in FPS in this regard here, but you'll have a huge impact on how the game looks between medium and low. High doesn't add too much and ultra is completely unnecessary unless you're playing the game in say 4K. Leave this on high, or if you have an absurd amount of VRAM, crank it up to ultra and forget about it. With that, we've now optimized our graphics settings. There's not much else here other than user preference settings in these other menus. You can change the vibration strength under general here. That is if you have a controller plugged in. And on the audio tab, the only thing you'll really change here is listening mode. You should follow the guide on the right hand side here, though usually leaving this on hi-fi is good enough. The only reason you'd want to change this is possibly changing to home theater and activating 3D audio if you have some crazy sound setup. Beyond that, there's not too much else. We can head back, regain some of our vision after staring at a really bright screen, and jump into the actual game itself. With that comes the end of this optimization guide here. It's really simple to get more out of your game, but of course it may still be very demanding. You'll need to tweak your settings further. Something you can change for more FPS is that NVIDIA DLSS option, assuming you have access to it. Otherwise, lowering your settings in general is usually a good way to go about it. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.